Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, as you are aware, on Friday this week, the Minister of Finance will be presenting a budget. And it's only through the budget that such uh, issues will be considered and agreed upon. In the, and if members of uh, this August House deem it fit that we should make violence on the budget, we can make those violence to ensure that we provide for the police to buy vehicles. I'm also aware that the police have now become very vigilant, Madam Speaker. They, with other law enforcement agencies, that uh, they have to recover monies that have been uh, abused, monies that have been misappropriated. Through that process, if we make so much recoveries, we'll make provisions for the police to buy vehicles. Thank you. Questions for oral answer, understanding order 74. The, on, the Honorable Member for Kanchibia. Uh, question number 61, Madam Speaker. The Acting Minister of Small and Medium Enterprises Development. Madam Speaker, the Honorable Member for Kanchivia asked a question to the Honorable Minister for SME and Cooperatives. And the question is to ask what measures the government is taking to support small and medium enterprises, SMEs, in Kanchivia parliamentary constituency to participate in the agricultural sector? The questions are from A up to D, up to C. I will answer the questions as they follow. Madam Speaker, the government is supporting small and medium enterprises, SMEs, across Zambia, including those in Kanchivia constituency, through the farming as a business program. The Farming as a Business program aims to stimulate mindset change among micro, small, and medium enterprises in the agricultural sector to begin attaching the entrepreneurial and business aspect to farming activities. The program is implemented through the Zambia Development Agency, ZDA, Enterprise Development Division. The program is implemented at provincial and district levels. The SMEs are trained on product development, that is quality, packaging, and branding, and also barcoding. How to keep business records, costing, and pricing of their products, networking in order to meet the market demands where one or two farmers may not be able to. In addition to the farming as a business program, the government through the Zambia Development Agency and the Zambia Agri Business and Trade Project under the Ministry of Commerce, Trade and Industry facilitates SMEs in the agricultural sector, access markets through linkages to various chain stores and large companies. In addition, the Buy Zambia campaign has continued to promote consumption of Zambian products. B, Madam Speaker, was what measures the government is taking to ensure that the SMEs are linked to international markets, especially in the neighboring countries? The response to this question, Madam Speaker, what the government is doing is to ensure that SMEs are linked to international markets, especially in the neighboring countries. Government is helping SMEs acquiring skills
to enable their participation in the export market. This, Madam Speaker, is being done through, number one, product development services to ensure that packaging and the product meet the needs and requirements of regional and international markets. This is done by ZDA, working with other government agencies that provide quality, standards, and acceleration services. These include the Zambia Bureau of Standards, ZABS, Zambia Metrology Agency, and Zambia Compulsory Standards Agency. The House may wish to know that these agencies have developed specific standards for SMEs. The second one, Madam Speaker, is Export Readiness Training Program to enable them appropriate or rather appreciate the procedures and documentation requirements for the products to be competitive in regional and international markets. The third one, Madam Speaker, is to support the participation in regional trade missions and fairs. Trade missions and fairs are important platforms for SMEs to engage in business-to-business -business meetings. The House may wish to know that there was a trade mission to the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, from the 20th to the 22nd of October, 2021, in which 23 SMEs participated. The mission was led by the Ministry of Commerce, Trade and Industry. The fourth point, Madam Speaker, is we are signing bilateral and multilateral agreements. Zambia signed agreements with the Democratic Republic of Congo and with Angola. Zambia is also a signatory to the Africa continent free trade area. These agreements help to improve access to regional and international markets for our SMEs. Madam Speaker, the third question was what measures are being taken to ensure that SMEs, especially those in rural areas, have access to technology to enable them develop into big industries. The response, Madam Speaker, the government through the Ministry of Commerce, Trade and Industry has partnered with technology developers who include CAMCO, Equipment Zambia, National Business Technology Center, NTBC, and the Technical Development Advisory Unit, TDAU, at the University of Zambia, to support SMEs with appropriate technology. The partnership are aimed at developing appropriate machinery and equipment, among others, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, additionally, the House may wish to know that there are a number of interventions across the country to support the growth of SMEs. However, these initiatives are fragmented, and as such, it is difficult to measure the impact on the SMEs. There is need for collaboration between all institutions supporting SMEs to ensure coordination of interventions that are responsive to the needs of the SMEs in all sectors of the economy. It is for this reason that the New Dawn government will prioritize in this regard the review of, of the SME policy framework Number two, to the development of a database for SMEs and business service providers in order to ensure implementation of evidence-based policies and interventions. And lastly, Madam Speaker, to enhance engagement with the chain stores for business market access of our SMEs. This will be through enhanced agreements with chain stores, other large companies, and financial institutions to support supply chains. I submit, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Kavushi. I thank you very much, uh, uh, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, SMEs are very important in any country. And if you want uh, the country to develop economically, the government needs to invest 
in SMEs. Previous government of His Excellency Edgar Tagua Lungo invested a lot in SMEs, Madam Speaker. We saw diversification process around the Copper Belt province from agriculture, from mining dependence into agriculture. We saw a lot of SMEs on the Copper Belt venturing into agriculture in areas like Lufuanyama, Mpongwe, Misakashi, Nimofrira, and many others within the province. Minister, are you intending to have the SMEs in Daba here in Zambia or Lusaka or any other town to, to educate many Zambians, those in Kabushi, those in Solwezi Central, those in Wengu, who are not aware about this important information of SMEs. We have seen that uh, today's response, you have concentrated on agriculture. Are you promoting any other sectors apart from agriculture where SMEs are concerned? And how much money have you reserved for the SMEs in our country? I thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honorable Acting Minister of Small and Medium Enterprises Development. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I think in a few days' time, the budget will be presented, and the Honorable Member for Kavushi will be well informed on how much resources have been dedicated towards development of SMEs. I must place on record, Madam Speaker, that since the inception of political leadership in our country, for the first time, emphasis and dedication has been given to the development of SMEs in our country by particularly giving it a ministry where a particular minister will be dedicated and seeing that SMEs are well taken care of, well managed, and supported. In the past, Madam Speaker, SMEs was just a story being told. Yeah. I personally come th from the Copper Belt, where the Honorable Member has well indicated that there was diversification. Madam Speaker, since time in memorial, the only thing we see on the Copper Belt is mining. No diversification whatsoever. It was just a song that will ended up becoming a broken record. Yeah. Yeah. But under this administration, Madam Speaker, I can assure you, Diversification that is hands-on. Yeah. Diversification that will be visible will be witnessed. Correct. And this is diversification that will be championed by the youths, the women, the marginalized, and the disabled people of Zambia. Yeah. Madam Speaker, I submit. Yeah. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Kantibia. Uh, thank you so much, Madam Speaker. And let me thank the Honorable Minister, Acting Minister, my dear brother, uh, for your elaborate um, feedback or statement. Um, Honorable Minister, you'll agree that when we're dealing with uh, matters of uh, SMEs, we cannot have a one-size-fits-all approach. Uh, the interventions for rural-based SMEs versus interventions for urban-based SMEs ought to be different. I'll give um, a very clear example of uh, SMEs uh, in, our, in our area here in uh, Kantivia uh, uh, constituency. You agree with me, Honorable Minister, that uh, an area such as uh, Kantivia uh, constituency uh, is focusing on um, agri-based uh, or agri-driven uh, SMEs and uh, industries have been identified focusing on uh, cash crops uh, such as uh, soya beans, sugar beans, common beans, groundnuts, rice, and fish farming. Added to this comes the need for agro-processing and uh, packaging in this regard. Um, 
And when you look at uh, the 45th domes within Kanchiria uh, district or Kanchiria constituency, uh, the SMEs in these four um, you know, uh, chief domes have the capacity and their target is, for example, under chief cop, are they able to generate about 300 hectares of uh, rice? They can generate uh, 150 hectares of beans. They can do 100 fish ponds, uh, that's fish farming. Under Kabinga, they can do 50 fish cages. They can do 150 hectares of uh, beans. They can do 100 hectares of uh, soya beans, etc. The same applies for Mpepo, the same applies for Chembe. My question, uh, Honorable uh, Minister, is that from the tabulation I've given, Kanchibia with the SMEs, they're able to, Kanchibia is able to generate or to harvest 300 hectares of soya beans just from SMEs. They can do 300 hectares of common beans. They can do about 300 hectares of sunflower, 300 hectares of rice, 100 hectares of sugar beans, 200 fish ponds, 50 cages, just in one year, um, you know, uh, season. The question then is, when does the Ministry of uh, Small Scale Enterprises, as well as the Ministry of uh, Commerce, intend to open their offices in Kanchibia to support the thriving uh, or the uh, potentially thriving SMEs uh, in the district? I thank you. The Acting Minister of uh, Small and Medium Enterprise Development. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And uh, I really appreciate the concern from the Honorable Member for the plight that is uh, concerned about for his people. Madam Speaker, the Ministry has just been formed and the Ministry is working in collaboration with all other stakeholders like the Ministry of Agriculture, the Ministry of Commerce, and other ministries that are already well established in these areas where the SMEs are operating. And the way the, the Ministry of uh, Small Scale Industries and Cooperatives will be operating, Madam Speaker, we are not just going to create cooperatives which will live on their own to run. As a new dawn government, we have learned from the past where youths or cooperatives were empowered and they never realized what was hoped for. And there was a retention or repossession of whatever was given for their empowerment. As a new dawn government, Madam Speaker, we want to train the cooperatives in the various skills where they want to operate, so that once they start operating, they function and they succeed. And to achieve this, Madam Speaker, it is not only the new dawn government to, start to run this project alone. We are also asking our brothers and sisters and the honorable members, even on the other side, to partner with government because what we are doing is not only good for the new dawn government, but for the people of Zambia. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, the honorable member for Bonamukubwa. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, acting minister, for your answers, precise answers. My question is, um, uh, what sensitization programs has the ministry put in place to ensure that uh, all these SMSs in these uh, far-flanked areas, um, sorry, the, S S the, 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 the SMAs, uh, small and uh, medium enterprise uh, 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 entities are well uh, informed about the the much needed uh, opportunities from the ministry, because usually the case is that uh, these guys uh, get information at the tail end and they don't tend to benefit. We've seen uh, uh, facilities from CEEC, um, Citizen Empowerment Commission, they don't access such information. So how, how are you sensitizing them, especially that this is a new ministry, so that they can have uh, information and see that there's a back-to-back -back also uh, benefit for them. I thank you. Thank you. The Acting Minister of uh, Small and Medium Enterprise Development. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I really appreciate the concern raised by the Honorable Member. Madam Speaker, I think it is important that we take serious concern from what the Honorable Member has raised, that we enhance our sensitization to the public on how best the funds, or rather the cooperatives, can be 
the benefits from the cooperatives can be accessed by the people. However, I want to take this submission, or rather this plea, also to the honorable members of the House, both in, in government and from the opposition, to say we have a responsibility as members of the House to get back in our to our constituencies and inform our electorates on the need to form cooperatives, on the need to coexist regardless of political affiliation, cultural background, religious affiliation, and form cooperatives, make applications through my ministry, and these will be afforded to the people. So it is where everyone comes with apolitical uh, ideologies and support the people. It is for the good of the nation. Thank you very much, Honorable Member. Madam Speaker, I submit. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Mwandi. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I wanted to uh, uh, ask from uh, the, the, um, the Honorable Minister, SMS, uh, first of all, I really want to uh, congratulate and continue to thank the president for this creation of this ministry. Very, very important ministry, which accounts for about 40% of employment uh, um, worldwide. So the importance on the SMEs cannot be um, overemphasized. But my question is that uh, the approach that is being taken currently looks like it's looking at the potential that the urban uh, SMEs has compared to the rural uh, SMEs. So my question to the minister is, I wanted to find out what programs have they initiated to make sure that those small, I mean, SMEs in Mwandi's potential is tapped because we are talking about areas that do not have access to network, but they have the potential also to grow. So I wanted to find out what uh, uh, programs they've initiated to make sure that every SME in Zambia, especially in the rural parts of Zambia is tapped and also access to financial services. So in as much as we have this ministry, the emphasis has been so much in the urban and we cannot overemphasize the importance of also them looking at the rural constituencies because this cannot be one program that just you combine the rural and the urban. We need to make sure that the ones that need the services more or the sensitization more are the rural. So what plans do they have for the rural constraints to make sure that the, 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 the information is disseminated, the potential is tapped, they also have access to the, uh, financial services that the, uh, the, the, the ministry is planning for. Thank you. Thank you. The Honorable Minister, Acting Minister of Small and Medium Enterprise Development. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I thank you, the Honorable Member for Mwandi, for a good concern. Madam Speaker, like I said earlier, that as a country or leadership, members of parliament, we have a responsibility to disseminate this information back into our constituencies, inform them of the newly created SMEs, SMEs and Cooperatives Ministry. But other than that, Madam Speaker, the reason why I am even standing here and acting as minister in this new ministry is because my colleague has taken it further with an approach of even reaching out to far-flanked areas, not only in the urban, but in rural communities. He joined the entourage of the president, even as he goes to Chinsali, to go and reach out and meet with the civil society, meet with the local government leadership there, and inform them on the need and the well uh, background that has supported the establishment of the ministry. Madam Speaker, I reiterate and I have to re-emphasize my need for parliamentarians in this House, regardless of their affiliation, to get back into their constituencies and inform the people of the need of setting up cooperatives and being a part of this. Other than parliamentarians, there will be no one bigger than them that will do the best job in informing their constituencies on the need for cooperatives. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, the Honorable Member for Zambezi East. Thank you very much, um, Madam Speaker, for giving me the opportunity to ask a follow-up question to the Acting Minister of 
of small and medium enterprise development. Madam Speaker, the reality on the ground, especially for us who represent constituencies in the rural area, is that uh, our people have challenges, mostly emanating from the administrative requirements to ensure that um, the SME has met all the registration requirements, starting from the registration with PACRA, registration with NAPSA, composition, and many other statutory institutions, including ZRA, to cap it. They also need to comply with the KYC requirements as outlined by the Bank of Zambia in order for them to open a bank account. Since the question asked by the Honorable Member for Kanchiria, the spirit of the question is targeted at how much support the New Dawn administration will give to ensure that these SMEs tap into these pronouncements which we are making as a government. How much support then will be given to these would-be SMEs, especially bank accounts have not got those resources required for all these administrative requirements that I have catalogued. What is contained in the policy? Does the policy address these issues that are raised? Those are the questions coming from the ground. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. I don't know if the Honorable Minister has gotten the question. The Honorable Acting Minister of Small and Medium Enterprise Development. Madam Speaker, thank you. I think I got the concern, or rather the question from the Honorable Member. Madam Speaker, the New Dawn government wants to make the way of doing business in Zambia to be so easy, not only for large-scale investors, but also for SMEs. I agree with the Honorable Member. In the past, Madam Speaker, the procedure for an SME or just a startup business to apply and to get registered was so bureaucratic that people gave up along the way just in the process of registration before they can even realize their dream of setting up a business. As I stand here wearing two jackets, one from Commerce, Trade and Industry, and also acting as minister under SMEs and cooperatives, the two ministries which are co-joined. Under the Ministry of Commerce, Trade and Industry, we are working on modalities on how best we can do, we can lower the cost of doing business. How best we can lessen the number of licenses that a business needs before they can be registered. Madam Speaker, it is only here in Zambia where you find that before a business is registered, they need between 7 to 15 certificates. Such, Madam Speaker, has made many businesses fail to see light of day. As for SMEs, we are trying to structure an application system that is so easy, Madam Speaker. The project proposal, that is so easy. Our interest is not the English that they write, but the idea behind the project that they want to execute. Madam Speaker, this is where, again, I call on the members of parliament to take keen interest in seeing what their uh, members from constituencies are submitting for, submission, uh, for access uh, for funds under the CEEC. Madam Speaker, I have heard the Honorable Member of Parliament being concerned about access to funds. Madam Speaker, under the Ministry of Finance, which the Minister of Finance will come and best explain, we are working on modalities on how best ease of access to funds for our SMEs will be done. What I can assure the Honorable Member of Parliament is the New Dawn government is committed to seeing that SMEs, cooperatives, become a reality, they succeed. We have Millennium Development Goals 2030, where we want to graduate as a middle income earning state. And we cannot achieve this if SMEs are not supported. Therefore, members, honorable members of the House, be informed with a lot of confidence 
that we are giving the utmost commitment to SMEs, of course, with your coming valuable advice, we'll take it seriously. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, the Honorable Member for Luena. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Uh, Honorable Minister, uh, the nation is certainly very excited with the decision to create a ministry that's going to specifically look at growing SMEs. Uh, but two of the challenges that I would like to remind ourselves of this afternoon is the issue of lack of uh, access to finance, which you have already touched on, as well as the many and rigorous regulations uh, that are applicable across many sectors. It can be even in consultants or manufacturing, which MS, SMEs, SMEs find uh, a huge barrier you know, to entry um, in order to grow the businesses. My question therefore, Minister, is this one. Is your government or your ministry going to carry out a comprehensive review of both the financial and operating regulations in order to make it easy for SMEs to access finance as well as be able to operate and grow their businesses. Thank you. Order. As uh, the time is 1640 hours, I suspend business for 20 minutes for a health break. Our business has been suspended for 20 minutes until 17 hours and under discussion is a question for oral answer understanding order number 74 directed to the minister of uh, small and medium enterprise uh, development and um Rena member of parliament mr movita anakoka has just asked a question seeking clarification from the minister and so we expect the minister to respond to this supplementary question just before we go on break pauline um, madam speaker made an announcement just before business started Yes, uh, just at the beginning of business for business for this afternoon, Madam uh, Speaker made an announcement uh, that on Thursday, 21st, uh, 21st October 2021, the Honourable Madam First Speaker directed the Honourable Member from Kana to reduce in writing the matter of public importance relating to over 150 houses allegedly on the, on the verge of collapse in the constituency. And in raising the matter, the Honourable Member stated um, to the effect that the state of affairs of the houses had been going on for more than two years. And um, the, the Honorable Madam Speaker said that the criteria for admitting matters of urgent public importance as are set out in uh, Standing Orders 135 of the National Assembly Orders, uh, Standing Orders 2021, which states as follows, and I quote, admissibility of matter of urgent public importance. 135.1. A matter shall be considered urgent and of public importance if A, it is a case of recent occurrence, B, it does not relate to the general state of affairs, C, it involves the ad administrative or ministerial responsibility of government, D, it requires the immediate attention of the House and the government, and E, it deals with only one substitute, uh, substantive uh, issue. Right, and uh, in 2.135.2, um, that is a continuation on the admissibility of matter of uh, agent public importance. A matter is inadmissible as a matter of public importance if A, it has not been raised in the earliest opportunity, B, it has already been discussed by the House during the same season, session rather, it is not so serious as to require agent attention of the House and the matter uh, and the government, or it is subsidies. So, in uh, that effect, the madam just indicated uh, that um, honourable member, the ra issue raised by madam uh, by, by the member of a parliament does not um, meet um, the requirements for it to be admit admitted as um, a matter of a public agent, and that the member of a parliament.